I just got done playing the network beta test for Gundam Breaker 4, and I am already sold. Bandai Namco did a network test last night for Gundam Breaker 4. This is an upcoming Gundam game that they've been working on for a while now, and it was technically supposed to be only a Japanese thing. Um, I snuck in anyways, and I suspect a lot of other people did too, because they said they had far, far more applicants than they were expecting. It was supposed to be some sort of lottery thing where only a few of the applicants would get in, but they ended up just opening it up to everyone. Unsurprisingly, in the first few minutes, the servers just completely crashed, and I was a little worried I wouldn't be able to experience the game at all. However, about 10 minutes later, I was able to get in. Here it is. Here it is. We're finally in. So just for a quick little bit of background before I talk about my experience with this game, I did play New Gundam Breaker on PC. It was pretty bad. I pretty much hated everything about the combat and the actual gameplay. And for the customization, I ultimately ended up just downloading someone else's 100% save to unlock everything so I could basically just treat it like a Gunpla customization simulator. And while it got the job done in that regard, I was well aware that it was nowhere near the level of quality as the first three Breaker games on the PlayStation. So when I saw the Gundam Breaker 4 trailer get announced at a freaking Nintendo Direct of all places, I was unbelievably hyped. We finally had a real Gundam Breaker game coming out for PC, but was it going to be any good? Well, having played a few hours of this game, I can confidently tell you, yes. Yes, in fact, it is that good. Now, I did have to play the Nintendo Switch version of this game because I didn't do a beta test for the PC version, which means that all the footage that I recorded of it is going to be pretty scuffed. I don't have a capture card that's compatible with my Nintendo Switch, so you're going to be looking at some good old DSP style camera footage. With that said though, the graphics on the Switch version are pretty crunchy, so you're not really missing out on a whole lot. Even when I played it the next morning in docked mode, it still was pretty hard to see some of the smaller details on the models, although the UI elements that had text on them did seem to be a lot sharper. And from what I've seen, that seems to be pretty par for the course when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. After all, it's basically a 10 year old tablet. So once I got in the game, the first thing I noticed is there's a really smooth transition from the menu screen to the in-game lobby. Unlike the previous Gundam Breaker games where you had like kind of a pilot character that you'd use to navigate around the lobby, in this game you are always inside of your Gundam. Um, and I like that a lot. I like building my own custom Gundams and I like being able to see my Gundam when I'm playing the game. So having more parts of the game in which I can see my custom Gundam and walk around with it and interact with other players using it, that's really cool. I like that a lot. There are also uh, little emotes that you can use to communicate with the other players. The hub world is a lot more multiplayer focused in Gundam Breaker 4. You're going to be able to bring in your friends and kind of hang out together in the lobby. So they added some emotes for you. I didn't discover these until the next morning. I didn't record any footage then, but it's all the, the usual standard stuff, your waves, your, your high fives, your jumping up and down with excitement, you know, that sort of stuff. So the first thing I noticed when I jumped into the tutorial is the graphical style of the scheme is really nice. So in terms of model fidelity and like how many polygons and how high resolution the textures are and all that, it's not going to be that much better than the previous Gundam Breaker games, but they did a little bit extra to spice it up. So a kind of a common-ish trend that I've seen with some recent games, I know one of the Need for Speeds did this recently, um, I think a couple of the Senran Kagura games actually did this as well. They've kind of started blending in like 2D sort of anime style graphic effects with the 3D models. And that's something that Gundam Breaker 4 does as well. So when you slash with your sabers, there's sort of a two-dimensional slash effect. When your character runs, you see these little two-dimensional dust clouds under their feet. It's a really simple little addition, but I think it adds a lot of style and character to the game, and I really like it a lot. And in terms of the combat gameplay itself, it is such a massive step up from New Gundam Breaker. The way the character controls feels great. The melee is fun. There's some really cool new mechanics they added to the melee that I'm going to get into a little bit later, but just giving a general overview, the combat is hugely improved. Melee feels fun, range attacks feel fun, the animations don't look as stiff and janky as they were in New Gundam Breaker. Maneuverability is for the most part okay. Um, when I got into some of the bigger boss fights, I found myself having trouble consistently doing this sort of boost dash sort of evade it's like kind of the dodge roll equivalent for this game is like this little side boost thing you do and you're supposed to do it with b and then pressing a direction on the control stick and i found that the timing for it was just a little weird because whenever i did it and i did it pretty much the way they show you to in the tutorial it seemed like it kind of only worked around 20 30 percent of the time and i don't know if that's just a timing thing where i didn't have it exactly right or if i misunderstood something about the tutorial and i was actually doing it completely wrong i did have my phone pulled up with google lens on it because 
the entire game is in Japanese since this was supposed to be a Japanese network test, so it's entirely possible that I missed something in the tutorial there. With that said, aside from that one issue, I greatly enjoyed the combat in this game. It's a lot of fun to just mow through enemies, and unlike New Gundam Breaker, you aren't forced to run around collecting EXP in order to unlock the weapons that you yourself put on your Gundam. You can use them all right from the get-go. So when it comes to your specialized weapons, you know, your non-like melee and range weapons that you're holding in your hands, there's OP attacks and there's EX attacks. And these work a little bit differently, but they're basically operated the same way. You hold down either L or R on your controller and you press a face button. And this is how you activate stuff like your Vulcans, your funnels, you know, if you have like extra swords or missile pods in your backpack, that's how you activate those. It's basically the same type of things that would have been special skills in New Gundam Breaker, except instead of having to unlock them and them having massive cooldown times, they're there right from the get-go, and while they do still have a meter that you need to fill up in order to use them, it fills up a lot faster and you can use them a lot more. You also have a ton of customization options as to which skills you want to use. When you're in the Gunpla creation menu, the very last option in the list is to choose which EX skills and which OP skills you have enabled, and you can pick and choose the ones from different parts and where you want them to be in your UI and which buttons activate them. There's a lot of customization in that regard. I never felt like I was limited by that. And speaking of customization, Man, we gotta talk about the customization in this game because that's always the biggest draw when it comes to Gundam Breaker, right? It's all about making your own custom Gunpla, and they've given you some really useful tools in this game to take it to an even higher level. So you've always been able to customize the arms, the torso, the head, the backpack, and the legs of your Gunpla in the previous games. However, a big new thing in Gundam Breaker 4 is they let you have asymmetrical arms. As in, you can have a Zaku arm on one side, and you can have an RX-78 arm on the other. You can do this with any pairs of arms in the game. You can just mix and match them however you like. And there's a lot of cool opportunities that arise because of this. One thing that I was really curious about that I was kind of hoping would be in the game, I haven't seen any confirmation of it yet, but I'd really like to see them add this. There are some Gundams that already have asymmetrical limbs, right? Like the, the Gundam Astroth, for example. He's got the big blue punching arm, and he's got the standard white arm. I think it would be really cool if the game included mirrored versions of those asymmetrical parts so you could make a Gundam that has both of the giant Astroth arms, one on each side, or has the launcher strike arm that has the extra equipment on the shoulder on both sides to do like a doubled up launcher strike. I think that'd be really neat. I haven't seen any indication of that being in the game, but I hope it's something they at least consider adding. This was all in the trailer though. This was all stuff we knew before going to the beta. What really took me by surprise was there's even more new customization features added beyond that. In adjustment, you can adjust the size, position, and orientation of the mecha parts, display the shield, and set the type of movement. You can also select parts to be removed. This is where things get interesting. So not only can you mix and match different arms, but you can scale and position them. And this is such a huge, huge addition. So obviously when it comes to Gunpla, there's a lot of varying body types and designs. So not every pair of arms looks good together. So what the game allows you to do is change the size and positioning of these arms so you can make your kit look, well, more symmetrical. So for example, I tried making a kit that had a ground Gundam arm and an ARC-78 arm. And the shoulder positioning of these two sets of arms is a little bit different. The ground Gundam's arm sits up a bit higher on the torso, and the RX-78's arm is a little lower. So what I was able to do was adjust the ground Gundam's arm to drop it down a little bit, and now the arms of my Gundam were at the same level, and they look like they belong to, well, the same machine. And I think that's a huge, huge addition because there's always been parts in previous Breaker games that were kind of hard to use with other kits because they just had really really weird body proportions and weird connection points that made them not look good with a lot of other parts. And by the way, this doesn't just apply to the arms. You can do this for any part of the body. You can make the head bigger or smaller. You can position how high the waist is. All that stuff's completely adjustable. But it goes even further than that because some pieces in the game have elements of the design that can be toggled on and off. For example, if you have the Zaku arm with the shield on it, you can actually take that shield right off and just have the base Zaku arm. You can take a goof arm and you can remove the spikes from the shoulders. You could take the RX-78's head and remove the V-fin so you can replace your own with a builder's part. This is a huge move that completely took me by surprise, 
and it massively opens the opportunities you have to make your own custom kits. The new tools they've added in this game for customization are incredibly useful, and I cannot wait to see what people create with them. Builders parts are back, and in terms of functionality, they seem to be pretty much as they used to be in GB1 through 3. I didn't really mess around with it a ton, but I added a few builders parts to my kit at the end of my playthrough, and I found them to be pretty effective. Thankfully, they're no longer doing that crap from New Gundam Breaker, where there's buffs and debuffs attached to them. You can just use whatever parts you want, and playing around the stats is a big part of this game, because unlike New Gundam Breaker, where you unlock one version of a part and that's it for the whole game in Gundam Breaker 4 every time you grab a GM arm every time you grab a Zaku leg every time you grab an RX-78 beam rifle it's going to have slightly different stats and it could have a different star value or a different level and you actually have to harvest and farm a bunch of copies of this part if you want the perfect optimal version of that weapon or the perfect optimal version of that part for your custom Gunpla. And you don't have to just grind for it. There are going to be ways to level up those parts on your own, to combine them, to craft stuff. This is a big part of the older Gundam Breaker games, and after it was removed from New Gundam Breaker, I'm really happy to see it back. You can get so lost in this game if you're one of those stat nerds that just loves tweaking and adjusting the numbers of their character. This is absolutely the kind of game for you if you're into that. Now, when it came to the network test, this was a simplified demo version of the game. So there were only three quests you were able to do. You were not able to do the main story mode, but quests are basically just these kind of standalone missions. You fight some enemies, you fight a boss at the end. We did get a little bit of a taste of a story because there is a character named Theo who introduces you to the kind of the, the main hub environment. He's in this little SD Gundam. I already like him a lot more than the characters in New Gundam Breaker. They're not doing the super generic high school visual novel thing. We've actually got characters that are interacting in real cutscenes in real time. It's a little thing, I know, but just having actual cutscenes instead of visual novel cutscenes makes the game feel so much nicer. In terms of characterization, they already have a lot more personality, the characters that I interacted with in, in the demo, than any of the characters in New Gundam Breaker. So on the story side, even though it's a game that probably a lot of people don't play for the story, I think in that sense it's still going to deliver a lot better than New Gundam Breaker did. So now's a good time to loop back around to the combat because there's something else big about the combat that I haven't brought up yet and that is that this game introduces asymmetrical dual wielding and this applies to both ranged weapons and melee weapons and it is so much fun. I ended up using a combination of a Heat Hawk with a Beam Saber for melee, and it was a really effective combo because the Heat Hawk is really slow, it's really heavy, but it has a ton of knockback, and the Saber is a lot faster, it's a lot quicker, you can do longer combos with it. So mixing and matching these two weapons, switching back and forth between them in combos is super, super satisfying. And the same applies to ranged weapons as well. So for my character, I chose to use a Ground Gundam rifle in one hand, and the beam spray gun from the GM in the other. This meant I had a lightweight, high rate of fire gun in my left hand, and a more powerful beam weapon in my right, and I was able to switch back and forth between them. And this is the fun part. You can just go guns blazing with both hands at once. Unload both of your beam weapons full magazines at once, and just obliterate an opponent, and it is so much fun to do. Going further into the painting system, though, they have changed it up. You can still chip your armor, you can still add airbrushing, you can still add, like, all the weathering effects you could before, but they're even more in-depth. So, for example, with the chipping, you can actually choose the color of the exposed metal underneath the chipped areas. You can make it so that the bare metal is bronze or like a metallic green color or gold instead of the standard silver, and that gives you a lot of different options for customizing your suit. You have a ton of options, and I'm sure we're going to see some really amazing customs with this system once the full game comes out. Another little quality of life thing that technically doesn't matter much, but I found really helpful, is that when you select a new part for your kit, you can choose to either keep its base color or automatically apply the existing custom color scheme to it. And again, maybe that's a thing that was already in the older Breaker games, but because it wasn't in New Gundam Breaker, it's new to me, so I gotta give it credit here. Now, despite this being a network test, ironically enough, I did absolutely zero online play. I'm just not really like an online multiplayer game kind of guy. I'd really rather have my own single player adventure, so I didn't really play around with any of the multiplayer features. I'm assuming they work reasonably fine. I'll probably play it with some friends when it comes out, but I was so wrapped up in the single player mode when I was playing the network test that I didn't actually test any of the network features but I'm, sh I'm sure they work fine i'm sure they're going to be fine the rest of the game was great i'm sure the multiplayer is not going to disappoint either now one other feature that i was kind of hoping to get to try out that i unfortunately wasn't able to is the diorama mode i don't think diorama mode was in this demo of the game because i couldn't find it anywhere uh, maybe it was maybe i was just looking the wrong places but they did show off in the trailers that there is a full diorama mode for the game it's kind of like the gallery from the older games but taken to the next level you can add effect parts like explosions and lasers and environmental pieces like buildings and rivers and stuff and basically create these giant diorama scenes 
It looks like a ton of fun. I was kind of hoping to play around with it. Unfortunately, I was not able to find it in the demo. Maybe it was there, maybe it wasn't. Either way, that is something I'm looking forward to trying when the game comes out. Now, in terms of new units being added to the game, everything that I saw in the demo was just standard stuff we've always had in Gundam Breaker. New Gundam, Jigen, F91, Unicorn, stuff like that. However, we did see the Gundam Aerial in the trailers and promotional material. We also saw a couple glimpses of a standard type graze and some more screenshots that they took for the Steam page. So we are getting at least a few new units. Now the total unit number they said was going to be around 250 and New Gundam Breaker did come with exactly 250 kits. So chances are it's probably going to be the NGB roster with maybe 10 to 15 new additions on top of that. I would not expect to see a lot of new Gumpla in this, and I would definitely not expect to see a roster on the same level as the mobile game. With that said, just the quality of life improvements, just the improved gameplay, just the improved customization on its own is already enough to make me strongly recommend this game, even if they didn't add a single new kit to it. If this was just existing kits that we already had in 3 and New Breaker, I would still strongly recommend this game. It is a ton of fun. It's a huge step up from New Gundam Breaker, and I'm absolutely ecstatic that we finally have a Breaker game that's actually good across all platforms. This game is going to be a day one purchase for me, and I cannot wait until it comes out. But if any of you managed to play the demo as well, I'd love to hear what you thought about it in the comments down below. If you want to support the channel, I am a partner of New Type HQ, so there's going to be an affiliate link down in the description. If you want to buy some kits there, support the channel, it would be appreciated. Do the usual like and subscribe. And while I know it has been a very, very long time since the last time I said this, I promise I will see you next time. Take care, guys.